Okay, well, it's the great and glorious Nick Dutch back on the camera again one more time and bloody hell do I look silly with this tinsel on, but never mind. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to one and all. I'm currently in a blog TV session with, uh, which is being hosted by Together for Peace and he's being interviewed by another guy on uh, religious issues, the whole, you know, religious versus atheist type stuff. And, and Jack Together for Peace has been coming out with an awful lot of interesting stuff about apparently supernatural experiences that he had and the fact that some of them were a bit scary and that's one of the reasons why he moved into Christianity in you know in, in the first place because it could then give him peace of mind so on one side of things I'll say that's really rather fascinating that if you feel that you're losing it a little then maybe you can use religion to bring yourself back on track which I think is a very good and a very positive thing and the other thing that I would say is what the heck, let's talk about lucid dreaming. I don't think it's a subject I've discussed all that much with people, so I'm just going to like sit here and talk the way I normally do, like completely unscripted. All I've got is a few ideas inside my mind, just going to like let it out, and you can make of this basically what you will, take from it what you want. Now, a lucid dream, the way I understand it, is a dream in which you are lucid, namely you are conscious, you are aware, um, basically more or less as much as you are when you're awake. Uh, and to the most part you will know that you're dreaming, although it will be rather weird because it will be a, you know, a, a seemingly real experience, but, you know, you'll have this thinking, this thought of, hang on a minute, you know, this is real, why is it a dream, and all that kind of stuff. Lucid dreams can be fun. Pure and simple, fun. Now, you can make them happen to a certain degree, but that requires basically a bit of work and a bit of discipline and dedication and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can train yourself using meditation to go through a imaginary journey. Let's say you can imagine yourself getting out of bed or you know walking downstairs, move, sit, standing in the kitchen, and then saying, "Okay, this is where I'm going to wake up." Basically, it's more or less the same kind of um, self-training as you might go through if you aspire at some point to have some kind of astral projection experience. So you can do that, or indeed you can make it weirder through having some kind of mythical. Um, journey to go through, like going through an, an, like an old like cave entrance or the, the the doorway to a church and inside it's full of mist and the mist disappears and it, and so on and so forth. You know, you, you design it, script it, go, go through it and carry on telling yourself, this is what I'm going to dream of. I'm going to make sure I dream of this. Use your, you know, willpower and determination to convince yourself of this. When you're in that sort of hypnotic state of mind, that meditative state of mind, and carry on doing that. The other way of doing it is to train yourself when you go into bed at night. So to try and watch yourself, observe the changes which are happening inside you as you're going through the process of slowly falling asleep and trying to, despite the fact your body is getting more and more relaxed, try and keep your awareness, keep your consciousness going during the early stages of falling asleep and again that requires a lot of work and at some point you can just let go sort of like seemingly let go of the physical thing and move into the dream still using you know your conscious mind and again you can't do it all the time I mean in my case you know I've got allergies and all kinds of other things going on and the, the body or the states of the body can affect the mind uh, and as such, you can't always reliably be able to generate them. When they do happen, they're actually pretty rather, you know, rather amazing. And you can sometimes get the same sorts of things you'd expect to get in, a, you know, a regular dream happening like something stupid and abnormal and random suddenly occurring. But also, uh, you can deliberately create things. You can deliberately bring things in it. I want to have a conversation with so-and-so, so you, you know, invite them along and then you have a conversation with them in the dream. Or there's a place you want to go, or you want to have, like, spend time in your dream apartment, so you visualize your dream apartment, and you can go there, and you can, I don't know, invite your friends around for, like, little espresso coffees and, and talk about current affairs or whatever. And also, these lucid dreams seem to take a, um, a long, long period of time, but in the quantity of time in the physical world might be a very short period of time. So maybe there is a gamma brainwave frequency happening there, you know, a rapid level of information processing whilst the body is comatose. Uh, that's a possibility. You can use this as part of your training in astral projection. You can do it for a laugh. And it's just curious. <laughs> Sorry, I still haven't got over my midwinter cold, but never mind. It's compulsory to have a, a cold in midwinter. So anyone else out there is suffering from one, don't worry, you're perfectly normal. 
All right, so yeah, I think you can also use lucid dreams to, I mean, the same way you could use dream analysis. Uh, you know, you have your dream, you wake up, you write down your dream, you come back to it after you've had a nice cup of tea, and you think about what you dreamt of and what that really says about things that were worrying you at the time. But in, an, in a lucid dream, if something random suddenly appears, you could do that whilst you're conscious and still in the dream itself. Alright, so you can then come to some conclusions and then come out of the dream and then weigh up the pros and cons of what you experience to see whether there's anything really valid there or useful for you intellectually and creatively. Um, there is, the only real danger with all of this weird New Age stuff is taking it too seriously and jumping to conclusions prior to having enough information about what you've actually experienced. Alright, that's, that's the danger. Always there's some kind of spiritual or religious component associated with anything even vaguely New Age. And some people take that a little too far and it gets all dogmatic and weird. And as a result of that, uh, you know, s strange things can, or strange conclusions can be jumped to, which are not necessarily based upon fact or reality. And yes, you can try and use lucid dreaming as well as meditation to try and do the sharing dreams with people type thing as well. Uh, and so it's it's an important part of your training. It's not essential. There's no nothing really essential about any of this stuff. And a lot of New Age stuff just doesn't actually matter. I mean, my interest is that when you get an experience which cannot really be put down to anything totally normal, maybe it gives you the impression that there's more to life than just the physical. And as a result of that, you can start to think, well, maybe, just maybe, all of us are somehow interconnected. So as an individual, maybe we don't exist. But as a collective, we do. If you get my drift. All right. So that's that's why it's so interesting for me. That's well, one of the reasons why it's so interesting for me. It really does say something about what we as beings potentially are. Or are we beings? Or are we, in fact, just one massive being? We just, we're just not aware of it because we're not in the right state of mind all the time to be aware of it. And all kinds of little weird extrapolations can be um, driven to or, or can come about as a result of thinking about all this weird um, heebie-jeebie, new agey stuff once you've just had a few experiences and start putting things together bit by bit. Uh, uh, but also trying to maintain a certain quantity of doubt because unless you maintain a certain quantity of doubt then you'll basically probably drive yourself completely nutly nuts. And I've known people who've gone that way. Uh, and I've known people who've gone nuts and then tried to convince everybody else that they should be just as nutty. And uh, I think that that is just plain wrong. Unless you have some doubt and some self-criticism, uh, or quite a lot of doubt and self-criticism, I wouldn't get involved with all this stuff. You know, if you're someone who is naturally a believer, then, you know, a certain type of person who is naturally a believer, then I, I would try and steer clear of this stuff until you've given yourself enough education to be able to try and think in a rational and scientific way about all this stuff first. Right? And that doesn't come from your you know, religious groups, that doesn't come from your New Age groups or your pagan circles or whatever because those people are by their nature um, believers rather than necessarily thinkers. And that's essentially where things can go wrong. So I've said before, you know, there, there's people who are the very empathic type, there's people who are like the really heavily thinking type and the empathic type got to become more heavily sort of intellectual analysis and scientific thought orientated and those who are more scientifically thought orientated need to be open to other possibilities because it's only when we can blend these ideas properly that we could actually start finding out more about the natural laws of the world because if anything happens all right whether it's an astral projection or a prophetic vision or um, seeing a ghost it's happening in accordance with nature because if it happens in the natural world it has to be natural Okay, that's it. If it happens in the natural world, it has to be, by its very nature, natural. It's just poorly understood, poorly rehearsed, and so on and so forth. Okay, I've got a private message coming in, so I'll be the good fortune. God bless. Merry Christmas to everybody out there, and Happy New Year. Um, yeah.